Why learn Lua? What is Lua? What is its purpose? Why was it created? What are its strengths and weaknesses? What is it used for? And under what conditions might it be a good idea to learn it? And conversely, when is it not useful? We'll be covering all this and more. But first, let me tell you a little story. Hi, I'm David, and I taught myself Lua in 2007. I've been using it for over a decade. I was working on a city builder game called Cities XL. The core game engine was in C++, and we selected Lua as the glue between the user interface and the C++ engine. And I fell in love with Lua because it was so fun. Why was it fun? Well, the reason behind that, and the reason why we chose Lua as a scripting engine, is related to the purpose behind Lua's creation. So what is Lua, and why was it created? Lua was never designed to be a standalone language. It's an extension language. The creators aim to design a simple, portable, versatile scripting language. It's written as a C library, which means it's both portable and performant. It has a low footprint. The full reference interpreter is only about 247 kilobytes compiled. We'll explore Lua's features in detail in a second. But before that, the performance, the low footprint and the portability make it ideal for scripting video games, where extensibility is key. Roblox or World of Warcraft and the Solo 2D mobile game engine are prime examples of this. Lua is also a natural fit for more serious environments where you need to extend a core behavior while still maintaining performance. For example, Redis, the in-memory database, allows you to use Lua to run business logic inside the database itself. NeoVim allows you to use Lua to customize how the editor works. Now, are there any other reasons why these tools chose Lua? What are Lua's other strengths? Well, as I mentioned, Lua is simple and easy to learn. It only has 21 reserved keywords, which means it's easy to master the syntax. You can easily guess what most keywords do, even if you don't know any Lua. For example, an if statement will look something like this, with a then and an else to delimit the block and an n to close it. As you can see, you use keywords to define blocks, not curly brackets or significant white space, and semicolons are mostly optional. There are also eight types in Lua the values can take. We have basic types such as nil and boolean and number and string and function. And there's a single data structure called tables. Now you might think that this simplicity means there isn't much that the language can do. After all, Lua doesn't explicitly provide classes or inheritance. However, as I mentioned, Lua is powerful and versatile. But why is it versatile? How does it implement? that versatility. Well, in a sense, everything in Lua resolves around tables. If you want to namespace your code, you wrap it in a table. If you want to create a set or a list or a hash map, you use a table. You see, Lua is a multi-paradigm language. Lua only provides a few features, but those features are powerful. You can use them to build language features to fit your problem or your style. And this means that Lua may be simple to learn, but it's difficult to master. Let's take an example. Out of the box, Lua doesn't provide classes or inheritance, but you can build them with tables. How can you do that? Well, Lua provides a mechanism that allows you to change how the language itself works. More specifically, you can attach a table to any value, and that table allows you to override the default behavior of the value within the language. This attached table is called a meta table. For example, you can't normally execute a table as if it was a function. If I create a table called tab and execute it, Lua will complain that tab is not a function. So far, so good. However, if you create a table here, I've called it meta tab, which contains an underscore underscore call function. Here in my function, I just print out a message and I attach meta tab as tabs meta table, the function in meta tab will be executed whenever the table is called as if it were a function. Now that's just an example. In the same way, you can't normally make data private within a table. However, you can override how a table's data is read and written by defining the underscore underscore index and underscore underscore new index on a meta table that's attached to the table. You can't normally add or compare two tables, but you can define the underscore underscore add and underscore underscore eq values of a meta table to define how the two tables should be added and compared. Now, can you see how those different overrides can help us create classes and inheritance? It's almost as if you can program the behavior of the language itself. Now, this makes Lua particularly interesting if you want to get hands-on knowledge of the inner workings of language constructs. 
but does Lua have any weaknesses? Or to phrase things differently, when should you not bother learning Lua? Its main weakness perhaps is by design. Lua isn't a standalone language. You can't create anything from Lua only. I've created tons of applications using Lua and Solo 2D, but the core game engine, the part doing the actual rendering to the screen, wasn't written in Lua. This also means that outside of the video games industry, there aren't many jobs available where Lua is a requisite. And even in the video games industry, the trend is to use dialects of Python, which is more widely known. So don't bother trying to build your career on Lua. So why should you learn Lua? Well, there are three main reasons to learn Lua. First, as I mentioned, Lua is ideal if you want to learn programming, but don't want to make a career of it, or don't want to spend time learning syntax. Second, if you want to extend what someone else has built, where they've provided Lua bindings. This is the route that NeoVim, the text editor, has taken. It's also how Roblox works. And if you're working with Redis, Lua can make your life much easier. Finally, if you want to explore computer science concepts, such as classes, recursiveness, or functional programming, Lua is a great way to try and build your version of that behavior, because you can adapt how the language works. And there's a fourth bonus reason. Because of the way Lua is designed, I find it fun to use. So let me know in the comments what you think of the language if you tried it up. And I'll see you in the next video.